Members of this prestigious body, the United States Senate, convene here in the spirit of one of the seven Noahic laws, which was set forth by you as an eternal universal code of ethics for all mankind. Are non-Jews obligated to keep the seven Noahide laws? Well, every person in the world has to keep the seven Noahide laws. The Noahide laws are being proposed as the standard of morality worldwide, and they will be adjudicated by an impaneled Sanhedrin, a group of 70 Jewish elders who will be adjudicating the world's morality predicated upon the Talmud, predicated upon the Talmud, the traditions of men as constructed by post-Messianic uh, rabbinical literature. There's a very interesting term that is used, and the term is Mishnah, Mishnah. And what you see in the Talmud is, you know, the Talmud is comprised really of three things. You have the Gemara, the Mishnah, and the Torah, or the Tanakh. And what you see with the Mishnah is the Mishnah means the duplicate. It's a double. It's an additional set of laws. And there is this big discussion in the Talmud, and in my opinion, it's an erroneous discussion. But they want to talk about the oral law and about how the oral law was always with them and about how the oral law uh, supersedes, in many cases, the written Torah. And it is then codified as the written oral law. I mean, that should tell you something. It's codified as the written oral law known as the Mishnah, the duplicate, the duplicate. And a lot of this hinges around the idea that there was an oral law given when the judges were appointed under Exodus 18, you know, it, uh, Moshe's father-in-law said, you can't handle this yourself. You need to appoint, you know, leaders of thousands, leaders of fifties, leaders of ten, and to make these adjudications. Now, we have a court system like that in the United States, frankly, and where we have this, you know, this rising rank of appellate courts that hear fewer and fewer cases. And uh, these courts are uh, you consider all these things, and then they would set down their decisions, and those decisions would you know, initially, supposedly, they were given um, orally, and then eventually they would become written decisions. What we have seen, though, however, in the practice of Talmudism is that we don't have the decisions of those priests or those Levites or those fathers of the tribes that were sitting there in uh, over the houses of Yasharon making decisions. Instead, we get replacement theology with a group of rabbis who were sitting around from the first century forward commenting on the Torah or the Tanakh, and those opinions and later opinions, you know, rabbis from the 4th and the 7th and even the 14th century are then, their comments are now considered oral law. They didn't exist at the time that Exodus 18 was written. They didn't even, even exist, most of them, until after the Mashiach had been crucified. And then these opinions would reflect their rejection of the deity of the Messiah. And this became the Mishnah. Now, arguably, there was a Mishnah in place before the Messiah in the Yerushalmi Talmud. But that Mishnah is scant in its content compared to the Babylonian Talmud, which is vast and controlling. And in many respects, it's very similar to the writings you see in Islam with the Sunnah and the Hadith and, the, uh, and, and of course, the, the Quran. Um, they're very similar in content, very similar in idea, and they're very similar in terms of the scope of their control. Uh, you know, in the Quran, it's very expressed. God has no son. It says repeatedly over and over again, although he did have three daughters at one point. But uh, even that was denied later on. But God has no son is the repetitive adage of the Quran. But it is also the repetitive adage of the, uh, the, of the Talmud. It's the repetitive adage of the Talmud as well. And so we see over and over again this idea that there is no son, there is no son, there is no son. And this is why it's quite easy for Islam and Judaism to blend one together. I mean, the two of them lived well together in, uh, in Spain under the Moors uh, for centuries, seven centuries roughly. They lived well together, adhering to the same doctrine, God has no son. And so this mission, this duplicate law, if you will, uh, has been constructed. It's a construction of men, the traditions of men, 
Mashiach talks about it. You nullify the Torah with the traditions of men. And this is what has been going on for a long time. This is what is present in, in the Talmudic writings. Well, some of that includes these Noahide laws. Now, these Noahide laws are, and you're going to see here, they are a pure invention of the rabbis in the Talmud. Okay? They contradict Scripture. They contradict the Ten Commandments. And they openly contradict what is the true source of what should be spoken about here. And they're done so in order to create worldwide control. Hmm. That's something for every all of us to consider. It's a very dangerous world. We can stop it now. <laughs> Maimonides said a person should always look at the world as equally balanced between merit and sin. If he performs one good deed, he tips the entire world to the side of merit and brings deliverance and salvation to the whole world. No one can do it, not the governments, not even the UFO. It's just you and I. The seven Noahide laws were given by God through Moses for all the people of the world in order to bring real peace to all the nations. 1. Believe in God, do not believe in idols. 2. Do not blaspheme God. 3. Do not murder. 4. Respect the institution of marriage. 5. Do not steal. 6. Establish a legal system to ensure law and obedience. 7. Do not eat of a live animal. As the Lubavitcher Rebbe said about the coming of the redemption, the Mashiach is ready to come now, it is over, or, or only from our part to do something additional in the realm of goodness and kindness. Add more goodness and kindness, you have the power. A world of true peace and justice for all the people of the world, all the nations. The truth is, is that we have the Ten Commandments, the Ten Devarim, which were written by the finger of Yah himself. And he said, this is my covenant between me and you. Do these and live in them. Do these and live in them. These Ten Commandments were revered all over this nation. There's been many placements of the Ten Commandments in courthouses and in town squares and so on and so forth. They're constructed in the overhead of the United States Supreme Court. They were the standard and the basis of all foundational law in the United States, the Ten Commandments. And now we're told to replace those with seven commandments, crafted, handcrafted by the rabbis, not written by the finger of Yah, in replacement it to take the place of the true covenant that was given to us. Now we're going to get this fake covenant, and this fake covenant is designed, intentionally designed, to uh, create a control mechanism for the Sanhedrin to create two classes of people, Jews who will have the Torah and dogs who will have the Noahide laws. And that's exactly how they think about it. It's not just Gentiles, it's Noahide. By the, by the way, you have to remember that uh, under the rabbinical teaching, there are 72 nations, 72 races of people, if you will, which are the direct descendants of Noah and his three sons. And if you go and you look, you will be able, you can count up those generations and see that there are 72 patriarchs, if you will, that have created the 72 nationalities. Now, all of that, of course, is inherently racist. That's inherently racist. We're going to look to people on the basis of their race. This is why Israel is known worldwide as the most racist place in the world. It's the most racist place in the world. And there are many Jews in Israel who will tell you that to your face, that it's the most racist place in the world. I mean, look, 
you go to Israel, you will discover that the Ashkenazi will not allow their children to go to the same school as the Sephardi Jews. They won't allow them to be in the same school. When it came time to do testing of vaccines, they kidnapped Sephardim children and subjected them to experiments. And, and we're, we haven't gotten to the Palestinians yet and how they're treated, whether or not you are Christian or Jew or, or a Muslim. There, but there is radical racist discrimination, and they recently passed a law that celebrated this racism, racism as the front and center, foremost centerpiece of all Jewish law. Okay, so let's just cut to the quick here and admit that Israel is established and founded upon intrinsic racism. Intrinsic racism. And when you're talking about we're going to adjudicate the world predicated upon the 72 races, I don't know how that's not a racist diatribe. It's certainly racist. But when you look at the Ten Commandments given to us by Yahweh, with, written with his own finger, there's no racism there. There's no sting, distinguishing between this person and that person. The Torah, and the Torah is very express about this, was given to all of the house of Yasharel and all those who sojourned with them. That is to say, anyone who wants to be under the Torah is under the Torah. Okay? You can't just, oh, I'm going to hang out with you, but I'm going to do my own thing. You know, it's like immigrants that come to the United States. I want to be an immigrant. I want to live in the United States, but I demand my own language. I demand my old customs. I demand my old, my old politics. Baloney. If you're going to come to the United States, Come to the United States, join our system, sojourn with us, take our customs unto you and become one of us. Then our Torah applies to you. It's the same thing with the Torah of Yahweh. The Torah was given to all of the house of Yasharel and all of those who willingly sojourn with them, who willingly sojourn with them. That's just the truth of it. And not only does it rob the entire relationship, but it forecloses the truth of the Messiah and his redemptive work completely forecloses it. And it and anyone who says, oh, I'm Noahide, okay, you, know, you might as well confess to being subhuman and a dog, because that is the conception of those who gave us the Noahide laws. That's what they truly think. These are completely fake. They're totally phony. They don't exist. They were made up. And they have been shoved on the world as a replacement for the Ten Commandments. They're disgusting, in my opinion. They should be rebuked, denounced, and they have no part, no part whatsoever of American of the American social order. None. They should be absolutely cast aside in this country. 